Well, look what I found in the uh, parking garage. It's a USB thumb drive. We should plug it into our computers and find out what's on it, right? No, not exactly. Hi, I'm Wes Bryant, and I'm going to show you how you can restrict which USB devices can be plugged into your machine. Stay tuned. So that always happens, right? You have some unexpecting end user that has a USB thumb drive, found it in some parking garage somewhere, and they want to plug it in. Well, that might go contrary to your security policy. So what we're going to show you here is how we can set up, let's say maybe one of our issued, company-issued, authorized USB thumb drives to be able to plug that into our machine, machine and use it. Uh, but then we've got this other one here, and this other one you could see, well, it's definitely seen its better days, right? But it looks like something you might find in the parking lot. Now, let's just be a little transparent with these. I own both of these, and no, I did not find this in the parking lot, but we're going to use it anyways, and we're going to uh, uh, throw you a scenario here. Now, the first scenario is we want to make sure that only an authorized USB thumb drive is allowed to be seen by the operating system. The drivers are going to be installed through plug and play, and then we can use it. But what we don't want is other USB devices being able to be plugged in and then maybe our users either downloading off of that thumb drive some kind of uh, ransomware if you will or maybe even being able to upload corporate secrets to the thumb drive and then take it home for whatever reason so let's go ahead and let's dive right in I'm in Windows 10 operating system and you will have to have at least Windows 10 Pro in order to perform these uh, tasks if you have Windows 10 home unfortunately you're going to have to sit this one out because some of the security features that are required to do this only come with Pro and above. So what we're going to do is down here in the instant search field, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to type out GP edit. Now, if you want to do this, um, you can do this. The full command would be dot MN dot msc at the end that's the microsoft management console extension but windows 10 is uh, smart enough to know that we want to edit our local group policy now in our local group policy there are a couple different types of settings that we can configure we can configure settings for the computer as well as settings that apply to the user. Now, what we want here is we want this setting to apply to everybody that sits at this machine and uses it and logs in. So we're going to be under our computer configuration. And more specifically, we're going to be under the Windows or the administrative templates. And you're going to be looking at the system uh, container here. And we're going to expand out system. And then under ex uh, system, you're going to see that we have device installation. Now, you want to expand out device installation, and then what we're going to want to do is go ahead and select that container because this is a context-sensitive menu, which means I have to be selecting the right folder to get the right policy options. Now, in here, you can see we've got various policies. Some of them allow us to do certain things with devices that are plugged in the machine. Some of them prevent us from doing things. Some of them actually complement each other, where it allows one thing, but it prevents something all other devices from being seen. And that's really where we're going to be working here. So let's go ahead and look at the first policy in which we might have to make some modifications. Notice that we have a few different options here. And one of the options that we have here is prevent installation devices uh, using uh, drivers that match these device classes. Now, when you do a device setup class, you have to understand that what you potentially can do and most likely will do is you will get something known as a globally unique identifier. I'll show you where that information is, but that's going to um, block every device. So in a situation where we only want to block one specific device, we're not going to want to use this option. But I just wanted to make a mention of it that that is a way that you can do it. But be very careful because remember, if you do it by a device setup class, that means any device that follows into that class is now going to be disabled. So what we want to look at is we want to look at allowing any of the devices um, that match any of these device IDs. And that's what we want here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to double click that policy and we're going to take a look at that, uh, what that's going to do for us. Notice that it lets us know that we're going to allow the installation of devices that match these uh, device IDs. And that's what we want. We want to get a device identifier off of this what is essentially a Patriot USB memory device. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my uh, machine here. And once we plug it into the machine, one of the things that you're going to notice is through normal plug and play, we should see that, hey, look, it automatically opens up and it allows us to use it. But in transparency, if I unplug this device, let me go ahead and just unplug it real quick, you'll see that it's going to disappear. And if I plug in, this is our, this is our uh, parking garage thumb drive. Again, this is my thumb drive, so I don't expect anybody to be doing this um, and testing this, if you will. So let me go ahead and plug this in. You're going to see that this device is also going to 
open up. That's not what we want, right? We want to one to work. We want all others to be disabled. So just wanted to show you that really quick. Um, so now you can see that uh, we have a basic configuration that isn't allowing us to do what we need it to do yet. So let's go ahead and let's get our device ID off of the, um, the kink or the um, Patriot memory device. All right. So how we're going to do this, I'm going to go ahead and what I'll do is I'm going to close down our file explorer and uh, that was showing me those devices. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. If I want to get to the device ID, I can right click on the Windows Start button here and we can choose to open Device Manager. And again, there's a couple of different ways that you can do. This is one of the easiest ways to find out what this device ID is. All right, I'm going to expand out disk drives under our device manager. So notice we're in device manager under disk drives. You can see that plug and play has already installed the drivers that I need in order to use the Patriot memory USB device. So I'm going to right click on this device and I'm going to choose properties. Now from the properties um, dialog box here, you're going to notice that there's a details option. Go ahead and select that details option. And here's where you can find more information about the device that's in question. Now, you'll see that there's a drop down menu under the properties and it tells me, hey, this is what this sees this device as. But there's a lot of other options we have here. Remember I told you about that class globally unique identifier? Well, it's right there. Be careful with these global unique identifiers again, because remember that doesn't disable a single device. It, device. it disables all devices under that device class. So that's not what we want. What we want is the fourth one or third one down from the top and that's hardware identifiers. And you can see these are various hardware Hardware identifiers, and we want to understand that the lowest in our precedent here, that's the most generic, right? All the way up to very, very specific. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the device ID that's kind of middle of the road, if you will, between being generic and being specific, but I do want you to keep in mind that that generic name is going to come up for us when we decide to prevent other devices from being plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this. All right, and you can right click on it and you could choose copy. Now, once that's done, we now have our device identifier. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna close down device manager for now. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this policy here from not configured to enabled. Now, once we choose enabled, you'll see that the show button under the allow in, uh, installation of devices matching any of these device IDs is no longer grayed out. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click that inside of the value next to the asterisk. If you double click, you should now be able to paste the hardware identifier or device ID into that field and choose OK. Now, at this point, we've enabled that policy and we choose OK. What we have said is I only I want to allow that device to be plugged in. But this policy in and of itself is not going to allow that to happen. Why is that? Because we've allowed this device, but we haven't prevented other devices from being um, essentially disabled. We want to make sure that our little parking garage thumb drive can't be plugged in. And at this point, if we plugged it in, it would work just fine. Here's where the other policy setting comes in that kind of complements what we've just done. And that's the one that we see right here. That's the prevent installation of devices not described in other policy settings. Those policy settings be the one, being the ones that we just defined. If we double click this policy setting, you're going to see that it gives us a series of options. It says, hey, prevent the installation of devices not described in other policies. And that's what we want to do. We want to go ahead and enable this. Now, once this is enabled, you can choose OK. All right. Now, at that point, we have said just this uh, Patriot memory device should work. OK. A little bit of a problem here. You have to keep in mind that once we have defined that one device can be plugged in but the other one can't, if I've already plugged the device in ahead of time, like you've seen me plug it in just to verify that it was working, um, I'm going to have to uninstall the driver because Windows has already installed it. Let me show you what I mean here. So what we should see is that when we plug this device in, it shouldn't work, all right? That's what we would think that the expected behavior is. However, remember, we've already initialized it, so Windows has already seen that. So what we need to do is we need to go in here, and we're going to right-click on our Windows icon. We're going to go back to Device Manager, and we're going to the same location. One of the things you're going to notice is if we expand out disk drives, you're going to see that we have 
that USB 2.0 USB uh, device that says here. That's the one we don't want. But remember, we have to make sure that we uninstall by right-clicking that device. So right-click on the device, choose uninstall, and it's asking you, hey, are you sure you want to do this? We're going to go ahead and we're going to let allow Windows to uninstall it. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind too. So now we have this set up to where we silently block devices. All right. Let me show you what I mean. So I've unplugged my little device here and I want you to pay attention to an other devices area that's going to give me a little bit of a warning. Those usually show up in device manager when the device is recognized, but Windows will not load the driver. If we've accomplished our task, that's what we want to see. So let's go ahead. We're going to plug it back in, and I want you to pay attention. Notice that right here is there, there's this other device. It's seen by Windows. Windows says, hey, I know what that device is, but if we right-click on it and we choose Properties, notice it says the installation of this device is forbidden by system policy. Contact your administrator. Now, that is perfect for somebody that knows to look here. However, remember that your average end user, this is going to happen silently, and what this could do is trigger a help desk call that says, hey, my machine's broken, it's not working correctly. We don't want that to happen because many end users are not gonna know, you will, but they won't know to look here. So we can go a little bit farther than this. Let me show you something that's kind of really, really neat. I'm gonna unplug this uh, device and you're gonna see Device Manager kind of kind of uh, reset itself. All right, there is another option in here that I really, really like and I think you'll enjoy too. So imagine being able to give your end users some kind of warning that says, hey, this action that you're about to take, that's being blocked because you know what's going to happen is when they plug a device in and it doesn't work, they're going to automatically assume that their device is broken, even though you know to look in Device Manager and you can see that your system policy is actually uh, stopping this action. So let's go ahead and let, how about we uh, let's uh, enable a custom message. In order to do this, you're going to see that where we are at is there, there's a couple of um, different policy settings that do something like this. We want the one at the top here. Notice that there's two that say display a custom message. You want the very first one there and we're going to go ahead and we'll double click that and then we're going to choose enable. Now once we choose enable here you'll see that we have the option to enter the text that we want and I'm going to go ahead and let's just put in there something like this action is blocked contact support and we'll put our Hollywood uh, phone number in there and then from here what we'll do is we'll apply this setting and we're going to choose OK. So now we have three things enabled right we've got our specific device ID, the one that we do want to be plugged in, we've got all other devices that kind of fall under that device ID are going to be blocked, right, because they're not specified by the policy. And then third, we want to make sure that our customer or our end users are aware that this was done on purpose. This isn't accidental, and it certainly isn't the fact that their device is broke. Let's go ahead and plug in our good old uh, parking garage USB device. And what I want you to see here is down, down in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, what we should see is when this device tries to initialize and plug and play says, let's go ahead and let's apply the drivers. Notice what it tells us. It gives the end user a heads up and it also gives them some action that they can take. And that is a very good thing to have so that the end user is aware that, hey, they just did something that they're not allowed to do on their computer, but it doesn't necessarily mean that their computer's broke. Now, what if you want to go a little bit farther than that? So the next setup that I want to show you is what if we have a public kiosk that we don't want to allow any of these USB devices or thumb drives, if you will, to be plugged in? Well, we can go, uh, we can get a little bit more granular here. And what I mean by that is, remember when I told you that there were some generic device or hardware uh, identifiers or device IDs? We're going to go ahead and use those in order to make sure that it doesn't matter if it's this device or this thumb drive all of them get blocked. Let me show you what I mean. So we're going to undo some of the settings that we've already done, minus our custom policy setting message. Might as well just leave that there. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click the um, ones that say enabled, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to change them to not configured. And I'm also going to uh, unconfigure, if you will, not configure, uh, remove the enabled option from the prevent all devices not specified by a policy. Because now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and prevent devices with the certain device IDs, all right? And how we do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in our um, thumb drive. 
All right, now once we plug that thumb drive in, since none of our policies apply anymore, all of our settings have been erased, you're going to see, and also that, that uh, the Patriot memory, we allowed it anyway. So it, it comes back up, it, we can see that it's working. Now what I want to do is I want to find the generic hardware identifier. Remember I told you they get a little generic here? Another way that we can find the properties of this device is by opening up File Explorer, and on the left-hand side, choosing this PC. Notice my Patriot USB device is in. This is going to take me to the same place that Device Manager did, but it might be a little bit quicker for you. We're going to right-click on that device, and I'm going to choose Properties. And then from Properties, we're going to choose the Hardware tab. And then from the Hardware tab, ensuring that the pep, uh, Patriot memory, and this, in my case, this is the one that I want, uh, Patriot memory USB device is selected, we're going to choose Properties. This is the same Properties dialog box that you can get from Device Manager, just another way to get there. And what we want to do is we want to choose Details again. And then under our details, remember that by default it says device description. We don't want device description. What we want is we want to look for our hardware identifier. And let me scroll around here. There we go. Hardware IDs. All right. Now, if you want to block all of these USB storage devices, we're going to choose, remember I told you they're generic down to very specific. If we get generic, that's going to say all of them. That's the device identifier that we want there. We're going to right click and choose copy. And we're going to choose OK. And we're going to choose OK again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to modify our policy settings. Let me go ahead and close down File Explorer. All right. And we're going to choose prevent installation uh, of devices that match uh, any of these device identifiers. The policy is pretty much just like we've configured before. When I choose enable, notice this show option comes up again, right? And and let me zoom in so you all can see this a little bit easier. Prevent installation of these devices that match any of these device identifiers, right? Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to choose show and in that field next to the asterisk, we're going to double click on it and we're going to put that device identifier on here. And once that's done, we're going to choose OK. Now, the good thing here is I don't have to unplug and plug these devices in to show you that. Uh, and here's what I mean. Notice that there's an option. Also apply matching devices that are already installed. Remember when we tried to disable our uh, parking garage USB device, I had to remove the driver? Well, this is going to do this for us. It's going to say, all right, if the driver's already installed, I want you to uninstall it, and I want you to shut these devices down. Let's see if that works for us. All right, we're going to choose also apply to uh, matching devices that are already installed. And what I'll do here is so we can kind of see this in the background. All right, notice our Patriot device is still there. there are, there's our thumb drive. All right, and let me bring this over to the side here uh, and bring back up File Explorer so you can see what happens. Now, I want you to pay attention to that USB uh, device right here when I choose OK to this. All right, notice what happens. It is gone. Instantly it said, okay, there's a device plugged in that this policy disables. Let me uninstall the driver and you're no longer allowed to use it. And notice, even our uh, little warning here is letting the end user know, hey, they're going to have to contact support. As a final little endeavor here, I want to show you that it did the same thing to the driver in Device Manager that we've seen in earlier policy settings. So I right click on the Windows tile, I choose Device Manager, and inside Device Manager, notice that we've now basically moved that Patriot memory thumb drive, if you will, down into the other driver category, just like we've seen our parking garage USB device. And notice that it says the installation of this device is forbidden by a system policy. Now this blocks all of those devices, right? And let me show you uh, one final thing that we truly are blocking now all devices. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unplug our company authorized uh, USB thumb drive and we're going to plug back in our parking garage USB thumb drive. And we'll wait a second and what we should see here is just like the uh, just like the um, the Patriot thumb drive now that other one is also going to be put under other devices and we're not allowed to install the driver and by association, we cannot use it.
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you can restrict a specific company authorized USB device and allow it to be used, but nothing else. Or you can get even more granular. And if you have a public kiosk and you don't want anybody connecting these USB thumb drives, you can protect them as well.